That is right, ladies and gentlemen, you are seeing this correct. It is manless season. Yo, what is going on, you guys? Bastion Wajo here, and today I am going to attempt to round off the year, if you will, with what is going to be the last banless prediction for 2023. Leading into 2024, guys, I am not exactly sure what exactly is going to happen. I don't think anyone one of us really, really know, because realistically, judging by the current the current format, right? <coughs> how diverse it is and everything, with the clear direction that I believe the banless, not the banless, but the old format is taking post fan. Phantom Nightmare, I really do believe that it, the format should fix itself, quote unquote, if you will, in here in the next like month or two, realistically, once the new Snake Eye stuff comes out, I think that Fire King and Rescue Ace are pretty much going to be fighting back and forth, similarly to like the OCG as far as the best deck of the format goes. However, we know, of course, that the last ban list came out on September 25th right, of this year. It has been almost three whole months since we got this ban list, and essentially what I believe is going to happen is Konami is either going to drop a major bombshell right before the brand new year, or what they will do is probably give a slap on the wrist on all the major decks currently out there, and in which case I think that is the most logical thing that they will do. However, as we know, Konami doesn't always go ahead and do the most logical things. So today we're going to go ahead and do a quick balance prediction of what I believe is going to happen post Konami's ban list. Now I am going to go to probably the more conservative, if you will, approach to this, nothing too outlandish, mainly because I believe this is the, the route that Konami is going to take. Now, without knowing exactly having a clear number one deck, it can put some people at unease, if you will. That is generally the Yu-Gi-Oh! trend, where you go from a format that has a whole bunch of very, very reliable decks to now just one, with, which is Cash Tier most recently. Previously to that was Tier Limit and so on and so forth. So it does tend to shape shift back and forth depending on what the newest card are and SP Little Knight currently is going to be the one of the best cards and whatever it might be. So these are the most meta defining cards. So we are going to predict what Konami is going to do again moving forward. So we're going to start things off guys by hitting the best meta decks of the current format just to go ahead and make sure we keep things even on an even playing field guys. So we're going to go ahead and start off with Unchained Unchained. Uh, Abomination's Prison I think would be the best way just to hit a little bit of the consistency. Like I said, I'm not going to go too crazy with this ban list guys. So honestly, I do not believe that Konami is going to bring down the ban hammer because realistically a lot of these decks that are considered to be top tier at the moment are not necessarily considered to be cancerous in any type of way. I personally, except for Centurion, <laughs> let's go let's make sure that was clear. I think all the top tier decks right now are extremely good, extremely consistent, can play around a lot, and are also relatively fair for the most part. I think just by hitting the consistency of these top tier decks, you are going to get a lot of value from these hits. Another card I'm going to put in the semi-limit is going to be Emergency and Purelli Sleepy Memory. Again, we are trying to hit the consistency. You can go ahead for Purelli, you can go ahead and hit the My Friend, you can go ahead and hit the, the Purelli Street. I'm just not going to do that much. But I think hitting the Sleepy Memory to two is going to be most optimal because really, see the best play for Purelli right now, especially going first, is to make sure you activate My Friend. You are able to guarantee yourself the search of the Sleepy Memory and you go about your full combo with those two those two cards. Essentially, you are able to go to Purelli Lily to <clears throat> to exit summon with your sleepy memory activate whatever get your get your uh, trap card I forgot what it's called and you make your nor on your opponent's turn and you sit on that one and you're good to go from there go full full combo if you will so that is something I do believe that could hit the overall consistency of Purelli at least is going first turn it's not going to be nearly as effective i would say so that's, a, that's something that i do believe would be really really effective in the overall balance now emergency is a bit of a wild hit i would say just because <clears throat> rescue ace while it is undoubtedly the best deck of the format without being overpowering without it being overwhelming compared to the rest of the top meta decks i think topping around 20 to 25 percent uh, of top cut which is still very very good don't get me wrong i don't think it's enough to really you know ban turbulence or anything crazy like that but again just hitting the consistency of it i think is really really key hitting emergency the two would be not game changing really by any chance but again you're hitting a little bit more of the consistency of it and again it's not to 
you don't want to absolutely obliterate these decks. What you want to do is realistically just make sure that they're taken down a notch to, to help the other rest of the decks really come up a little bit. And realistically hitting the consistency of all these can really help in propelling. Still, Rescue is still going to be one of the best decks, but other decks out there like the Fire King strategy, which is really going to be the next best deck strategy line that we're going to be seeing. So I think that pushing that deck a little bit more can help change and push the format in that route as well. Uh, what's something that we do need to go ahead and address realistically guys is going to be the Ishizu cards. The Ishizu cards, Agito and Kelbeck have terrorized us for far too long. I think realistically guys, these, these two cards are absolutely stupid. They're so ridiculous. You mill them, you get them into the graveyard in any way you can and you automatically mill five, your opponent mills five. Not only are you making your opponent miss out on an eighth of their deck essentially, you are also going to be milling five which realistically if you're playing this you're gonna be playing this in like some tier limit variant or some type of runic variant where you're gonna be, be, be plusing a lot so i think that's just a little ridiculous guys it's like pretty much like having <clears throat> a guaranteed mill of whatever you want in your deck because the, by the time you get to these cards you're gonna be have milled majority of the deck already so realistically i think agito and kelbeck are just way too ridiculous to in any format to really to be allowed to run rampant and that's the reason why i think that it has come time to just ban these cards cards and in addition to the banning guys i do also want to go ahead and let's just go ahead and put the gimmick puck that lock away for once and for all it's really unhealthy to have a card that says you don't play Yu-Gi-Oh. which that brings me on to my next point of course i do still need to ban the calamity calamity is just a ridiculously good card <clears throat> is extremely oppressive it uh, pretty much shuts off your entire field activation so you can't really do much i think the only way you can play around this is if you're playing virtual world or if you're playing virtual world right now then yo good luck to you but i just don't think calamity gimmick puppet agito kelbic are healthy cards for any format and hence why i think they really realistically should be banned and i don't understand why they haven't been banned already let's just be perfectly clear so uh another card i think can be added to this forbidden limited list now going from i believe three to one uh it's gonna run running tip <clears throat> i think the runic engine overall is absolutely ridiculous i think bringing the fountain to two did absolutely nothing to hurt the deck i think bringing tip to one does quite a bit to the strategy then you can still go ahead and go full combo with still every single card is a terraforming with your with your hugan so you are good to go with that you're not losing anything out on that but the fact that you can search out whichever one you want whenever you want with the runic tip i just think it's a little ridiculous so hence why i think that runic tip should be worthy of a at least a limit on the next ban list guys we've seen that the runic engine is extremely powerful we have runic stun we have the runic uh was it horus or runic bestials and when the Joshua Smith won the most recent YCS with as well, given Joshua it could have probably won with whatever deck he wanted, but he chose to play this deck for a reason, I'm assuming for a really good reason, and, and that not just because he is the one that he liked, I'm pretty sure he went into this understanding that the runic cards are ridiculously powerful, and it was a great way to outgrind any opponents, hence why I believe Runic Tip realistically will probably get either semi-limited or limited. My bets are on limited for this next ban list because realistically putting the Fountain to 1, which would be the next other option you can do, it just absolutely kills the strategy, whereas putting the Tip to 1 really just makes it so you have to play a lot of the more inoptimal ones, but the deck is still definitely very viable and the engine is still definitely viable as well. Next up, guys, we're gonna, let's go ahead and unlimit some of these cards. So I have Spellbook of Judgment. It went to one rec recently, like a year ago or something, if I'm not mistaken, probably less than that, and it hasn't done absolutely anything. So let's go ahead and put Spellbook of Judgment to three. I really don't think anyone's going to bat an eye. Uh, let's, let's be real here. Uh, next up, guys, so, so so we just got this updated in Master Duel less than a month ago where Zodiacs actually got a lot of their stuff right back and i don't see why we can't do that here in the tcg i don't think it's going to really do that much i could be completely wrong i could be completely wrong i could be completely wrong in the fact that this could just become another zeus 
a Sky Crisis whatever base deck, it could be extremely uh, toxic or whatever it might be, it could be splashed with some Tri Brigade, I believe that was with the previous way that it was played if I'm not mistaken because they're all Beast Warriors, uh, so that's something that is worth considering, but I think Zodiac Dryden and Zodiac Barrage could potentially be unlimited. I believe they're both unlimited back in Master Duel as well. I don't think they have been doing really all that much because they're realistically, well, Master Duel is his own different meta, so we can't really compare too, too much. But I think having these two to three and the Rap Pierre to two would be groundbreaking to see what Zodiac can really do in the current form. Now, when I'm not touching Zodiac Broadbull, that would be outlandish and ridiculous. So we're going to go ahead and just leave Broadbull completely banned for the time being. I'm just very curious as to what Zodiacs can really do in the current format. The Zodiac Barrage to three, I believe it is forbidden right now. It is uh, it, it is on the forbidden list as well as Dryden, both forbidden and Rap here should be at one, if I'm not mistaken. So bringing that to two, just see what that can do. Rap here at anything more than one is crazy. This is probably the, the more the more wilder of the of the three uh, unhits, if you will, for Zodiac. But I think it could be a lot of fun. I think it'd be a neat experiment. In worst case scenario, you just hit it with an uh, emergency ban list and you, you clean up after yourselves and you're good to go from there. <clears throat> uh, Branded Fusion, I think, is a card that realistically, brand, it has, Branded has been dodging every single ban list for as far as I can remember. I think Branded overall, Branded Despia, Branded Chimera are all extremely good decks, extremely good decks that are overshadowed because other decks are less fragile. So that is what, hence why I believe Branded Fusion has not gotten hit yet as it has in, I believe, the OCG as well. So I think, let's go ahead and, and, and touch base with it a little bit more. Branded is one of the best decks still. Still, it will always be at the very worst a tier 2 deck. Very, very worst. So I think Branded has proven to where it is viable enough to where it is competitive, but not rogue enough to where it can be completely just forgotten about. So I think hitting Branded Fusion 2 again hits that consistency and is able to do a lot for the rest of the format as well. Now, next card that I do want to go ahead and see get off the Forbidden Limited list, or will at least get limited again, is Magic Spectre Kieran. And we got a whole slew of Magic Spectre cards that are going to be coming out this upcoming year, guys. Early this upcoming year, if I'm not mistaken. And we need Magic Spectres back. And realistically, we got the uh, High Avatar Kieran for the Fire King Structure deck. Why not have is Pendulum Counterpart join it off the Forbidden Limit list, guys. Let's go ahead and unban Limit. Let's limit the Magic Spectre Cure, and we'll go ahead and see where that takes us. Uh, next up, guys, I have Druid Swarm. Druid Swarm is a extremely powerful card, guys. I think that hitting Magnumut might have not been the best hit. I think that hitting Druid Swarm would have been the better option, but I think let's go ahead and semi-limit the Druid Swarm. You could even make an argument to where limiting the Druid Swarm is probably the better option, realistically. Um, you know what? I'm gonna do it. Let's go ahead and limit the Druid Swarm. You we can play one Magnumut and one Druid Swarm, and you know, all the Serenaires we want. Really, let's see, guys. I think Druid Swarm's ability to just send any special summon monster that you have, your opponent might have, just send it to the graveyard, non destruction uh, removal is really, really oppressive. It can be really, really oppressive. And I think that that is why it's really become more of an issue card now in the current format as well. So I think it's about time we go ahead and limit it. And we're going to go ahead and end the video off, guys, with two cards I, I think have escaped the ban list, eluded the ban list, if you will, for far too long. Uh, let's go ahead and limit that Fenrir. Let's go ahead and just be honest with ourselves. Fenrir is a broken card. And if your deck can play it, you absolutely run it. Um, this is way too splashable. The card is absolutely ridiculous. Now, if they don't limit this or don't hit on the balance, I'm not going to be one to complain because realistically, I love playing Fender. I think it's a great card. I think it's a fantastic card, I should say. Uh, going first, second, whatever it might be. I think it adds a lot of field presence. I think it adds an immediate interruption. I think it replenishes itself in the hand. So if your opponent gets rid of it, you can special summon another one. Or you can go ahead and use that discard fodder if your deck requires it or whatever it might be. So I think it's a fantastic card, but I would hate to see it go. But realistically, I'm just going to go ahead and go with my gut and say it's going to get either semi or limited. I'm leaning more towards limited, definitely. And Eradicator Epidemic Virus, realistically, guys, let's go ahead and get rid of this card. Um, similar similar suit goes for all the cards that I will have forbidden on this list. Is that realistically, guys, Agito Kelbeck are oppressive and just absolutely just ridiculous cards. You generate the, the player 
playing these cards way too much advantage and absolutely disadvantage to your opponent. Uh, the Gaming Puppet Lot is ridiculously cancerous. Same thing with the Calamity Lock and same thing with the Eradicator Epidemic Virus because realistically, if Labyrinth doesn't have this card, Labyrinth is a much, much less of a threat. Now, I know it's not necessarily a always win condition for Labyrinth, but let's be real here, that card is absolutely crazy and if a deck can run it consistently and set it whenever it wants and activate turn zero potentially, which Labyrinth can definitely do, it becomes a bit of a problem now guys. Now, now you hit this or you hit half the Labyrinth deck, so I'd rather you hit this and let people play Labyrinth, that's my personal opinion. But let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. Am I wrong for thinking about all this stuff, guys? Honestly, I think it could make the for the format a lot more interesting. Seeing, seeing Zodiac back into the format and really just bringing down the notch of all of the top tier decks, I think it'd be really interesting to see what exactly comes of it and seeing Fire King skyrocket just swoop itself to the top of the tier list. So let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. Is there a card that I missed? Is there a card that you want to see? Or am I completely wrong? Just go ahead and let me know in the comment section down below, guys. But without further ado, hope you guys did enjoy. Hope you guys have a fantastic Tuesday. Have a fantastic rest of your week. And if you guys don't see me before the holidays, happy holidays, guys. Happy New Year, and I'll see you guys in the next one. <laughs>